Hello everyone, my name is Uma Bokil and I am here to discuss something extremely amazing with all of you. This uh, theme is very dear to me, the theme of love. And um, when you mix that and uh, some form of art together, it uh, culminates into something really, really more beautiful. Someone who likes poetry and love both together, uh, it was really a pleasure for me to see my dear friend uh, publish his book of poems with us at Ink Feathers Publishing. And uh, he, he has been writing since a long, long time. He writes in both Hindi and English uh, under the name Drunkard Poet on Instagram and other platforms of social media. Uh, I was personally glad when he came up to me and uh, he wanted to publish his work and a year later he has. So in conversation uh, with him today, here is uh, Canada-based Ankit Mishra with me, the author of Threads of Trust. Hi, Ankit. How are you doing? Hey, Uma. I'm good. And thanks for the beautiful intro. I hope everything is going well at your end. All well. Great. Yeah. Great. So you. Ankit here has uh, published uh, a wonderful book of poems, and uh, it's based on love, sensuality, eroticism, and uh, lust. All these emotions put together, he has brought in various kinds of um, poems into his work. And uh, what la what's the be what the best part about his book is that every word hits you right at home, uh, no matter which stage of life you're at, which stage of love you're at. And he has done a brilliant job of curating these beautiful pieces. Uh, they are short and long and they are like an up and down journey. So you can read them at a stretch or you can read them one at a time, which is both equally great based on whatever you go. I have the book right here with me. It's on the cover is here. Uh, he ha also has published in the hardcover format. So uh, speaking of uh, the world famous proverb, uh, Ankit, they say that never judge a book by its cover, but your cover is so <laughs> beautiful, so beautiful. Yeah. I just can't imagine, you know, a book not having a great cover. What What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, and it came up really nice. And I think uh, I'm thankful to Harshil. Uh, mm. He's independent artist based in Bangalore. Yeah. So I got in touch with him and explained him the concept, mm -hmm. uh, like what I'm looking for. And it, it went well very with, uh, with the title of the book, Threads of yeah, Trust. Yeah, yeah. So, so here I can see two intertwined hands together and one of them looks a little bit inhuman. So what, what was the concept behind it? What, uh, what was the thought behind having an inhuman hand uh, meeting a human one? I think all of us are a uh, spirit inside all yeah. of us, right? So yeah. the whole concept of this book is based on the duality of life. Hmm. So these are not two different people. These hmm. are the hand of same people. Mm -hmm. So when you try to work in a direction where you want to unite with your soul, that's where you, you know, uh, kind of establish the best threats of trust with your own self. And yeah. that was the whole idea. The journey is about discovering yourself, whether it oh. is through love or lust or any other emotion. Right, right. That that's that's really beautifully explained. And uh, I was actually about to ask you that uh, when I just saw saw the cover, but uh, I thought you know we'd save it for a discussion like this. So that's really wonderful. All right, moving to the next part. Uh, now, Ankit, I read a lot of your poems and I personally love the theme of erotica. I love uh, I love it when uh, love is mixed with uh, lust and, you know, sensuality. Uh, but, you know, normally when you see the emotion of love, it has been established since generations and generations as some form of affection, fondness, expression. But uh, these days, you know, uh, people... Uh, don't focus as much on sensuality and erotica as openly or as overtly as they might, you know, uh, do while reading something. So um, what I wanted to ask, what I was intrigued by is, uh, do you do you think that, you know, the, the equation of love plus sensuality plus eroticism uh, is equally important or is it just love that does it for some people? So, uh, what uh, through your poetry you have tried to express a lot, but uh, personally, uh, what 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 is your perspective towards this? I believe uh, love is not just an emotion. It's like a you know super emotion. It's like a super set. Right. You can't imagine a rainbow with just one color, right? Correct. Correct. You need a rainbow with the different uh, spectrums of colors in, inside that. Uh, 
Correct. And same, same, same goes with love. You know, mm. you cannot just say that love is just a one kind of feeling or a different kind of feeling. Yeah. It covers all the spectrums of life, whether it's a love for a child uh, from mm. the mother or parent side, yeah. whether it is a love towards your companion, mm. towards your friend, towards your teacher. Mm. Uh, it could be a you know varied in form, but when it comes to sensuality, right, it's very misunderstood in the yeah. uh, society right now. Yes. Uh, sex is not a sensuality, uh, to be very mm. frank, mm-hmm. right? um intimacy is i think is is one of the most difficult uh thing that people are not able to understand Correct. right now Correct. and i believe sensuality and intimacy is it's same hmm. some you know um gets it through the physical meaning Correct. some gets yeah. it through the intellectual meaning right. and you know uh, there are different ways of uh, reaching to that state but Correct. uh that said uh i would say uh to me personally love hmm. is like uh it's it's something that unites you with your own self absolutely even though you you know you are in love with someone but mm. that someone becomes a kind of a medium to mm. unite yourself with your own soul soul mm-hmm. and that's why we call it like a soulmate i think that's absolutely. what my definition is right that's that's pretty yeah. that's really pretty and i quite agree i mean uh, even i have always uh, looked at sensuality as something different than what uh, other people have perceived it to be and to me it was a mix of sensuality and intimacy that brought in an essence of itself into the equation of love because love's there and it is an immortal part that i believe exists in the universe but so is sensuality i mean uh, yeah. the kind of expression you have as an individual towards love it can be through sensuality it can be a combination of love and sensuality which i think is beautiful and it is such a subjective matter mm. that it depends from person to person how each perceives intimacy exactly. or, or lust or sensuality also how they perceive love so we can't really pin a finger down on what one exactly uh, means by just love or any of the emotions it has exactly. to vary uh, because each person is different each fingerprint is different so i have grown to believe that in the universe also uh love or any other feeling is basically what does it best for you and that is that is what i got from you know a lot of th- things because uh, as you said rightly it's a your poems are a manifestation of all these things put together so the narrator or the uh, writer in the poems he is wishing he is manifesting a love with his lover which is uh, which exists in all forms it exists in exactly. across all sceneries across even if sometimes it's in his mind and it's not like he's focusing on just one part he's going uh, and you know believing in multiple faiths multiple belief systems and his lover exists in multiple forms because all of us have exactly. our own personalities to deal with so that is something that That's i found right. uh, really really wonderful and uh, it was really relatable to me to read about those poems and uh, going back to the topic now of uh, how people have not you know they keep uh, perceiving yeah. sensuality differently and uh, us who have grown up in an indian society now you have grown up in an indian society but right now you you are exploring different worlds you are in uh, you've been in the states you've been in canada you're uh, there right now so was it a a uh, mind shift for you or did you get a broader perspective into how people uh, perceive it there and how we have been perceiving uh, it or having been taught to perceive it so what what kind of difference did you notice i get this question a lot right <laughs> based on the people who read my work right yeah. and I, i i'll i'll respond in in very simple way mm. our land in india is a land which has taught us about both karma and karma yeah yeah so sensuality is part of india right from the beginning right from even the our you know vedas speak the language of pleasure right right uh somehow uh, the language itself uh, got distorted yeah the interpretation got changed and i think that bollywood is one of the biggest culprit <laughs> in doing that yeah i mean it objectified the whole idea of sensuality yeah. Mm, right mm. uh and then now we are started uh, to accept it in much better way i would say yeah. from past 10 15 years we are acknowledging even the attraction would be in the same uh, sex also right yes. just to talk about the physical intimacy right yes. Yes. and i think the western world uh, uh, steal the idea from us and mm-hmm. the the western world here is very good in putting the censorship 
Mm. Uh, if if you analyze right, whether it was British Raj or you know even the American society, mm-hmm. they love to put the censors on the thing, which gives you absolute freedom, even though yeah. they talk about the freedom. Even though they talk. So, yeah. So here, uh, I I think it is part of uh, their culture now. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, uh, it's it's part of their movies. It's part of their music. So that freedom does exist here, Got which it. was slowly and slowly censored by these very institution mm. um, in India. to yeah. you know put us back in time uh, but i believe that we were there at the pinnacle yeah. of that and we will reach there people will understand it in much better way rather than associating it with just you know pure uh, you know the sexuality sensuality and sexuality are two different things very very true very true in fact uh, we are in fact uh, going back to our roots in fact uh, the kama sutra has been you know discovered exactly. and uh, you know started uh, in the roots of indian uh, in that time so that is we are going back to that a lot of people are inspired uh, a lot of countries and worlds are getting inspired by that and uh, i'm glad to see it happening that we are going back to our roots understanding the depth of all these things and, exactly you know it is this part it is this form of um, art and artists that understand it first and foremost because uh, the people who can perceive art or can perceive emotions slightly at a deeper level they understand these things first and uh, at least this is my observation that uh, they they are able to express it in um, ways other than the normal which is where it hits you right to the bone so one uh, you know it can be a uh, art of any form it can be writing it can be music it can be any other uh, form of fine yeah. art as well or a performing art and poetry itself has a very uh, strong hold over the human emotion and it uses human emotion to its advantage as well so when put rightly a poem or any piece of poem can uh, just make or express things that you may not be able to understand otherwise so is that what drove you to writing poems because i have uh, i have read a lot of your work on instagram and now uh, through your book and i think that is also what uh, got us start uh, started talking at first uh, our writing uh, and on you know other social media so how how did you steer to uh, poetry uh, what what inspired you to put all your work down through a medium of poetry i think writing uh, since my childhood was uh, a medium for me to vent out mm. if i can put it that way right mm. Mm. and i i do sketch i do click photographs right okay. uh, i try to seek the beauty in every ordinary things in life right right and then uh, i i won't say that i'm a poet i mm. still would not consider myself uh, i just put together my thoughts mm-hmm. and uh, i think this this one question that you know a lot of people have asked me on instagram that why each of your poem ends with the exclamatory mark if you have noticed yeah, that yeah 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 right all, right all of them do <laughs> yeah. right and it's perfectly imperfect hmm. if you go to the poetry world right um, nobody does that yeah yeah because i i because to me it's my emotion it's not a poetry right. i mean people consider it poetry uh, you know it's an honor for me people okay. are reading that it's as a poetry but to me it it, it is just purely my emotion and i cannot put a full stop to my emotion and that was the logic behind putting the exclamation and i think i've explained it earlier that even if i need to rewrite the same poem again hmm. i would probably do it differently of course so so as i mentioned in my i think uh, books introduction that it's a hmm. perpetually broken thread of trust right right the same right. thing goes for poetry and same thing it started uh, uh, you know when i started writing it was the whole idea that it is a perpetually broken thread of trust for me so i started putting my thoughts and mm. uh, before i was being called drunkard poet <laughs> uh, i used to uh, put in my signature an introvert writer with extrovert thoughts oh, so okay yeah yeah so that that's how i started writing because i just try to vent out all my emotions in that mm. form mm-hmm. you have also uh, mentioned that uh, it all started when your mother handed you yeah, a yeah. piece of paper because right, right. you, you, you right. wouldn't talk a lot so she had given you something to scribble exactly and, so, and mm. there are still some papers lying uh, back home in india where uh-huh. i drew and i used to do a lot of political satire on religion and all those yeah. stuff uh, back then when i was just growing up in my hmm. teenager or adulthood i would say Right. And yes, yeah. I mean, that was the medium for me because I used to just 
uh, kind of consume everything which is happening all around me and then just vent it out right. uh, in the form of either sketch or poetry or some write up Hmm, hmm, hmm. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hmm. So, um, when we write poems, each of us has a different style. Some of us use these poetic devices. Some of us don't. Some of us use a lot of metaphors. Some of us like to keep it simple. And uh, I particularly love your choice of words a lot. Your vocabulary is personally a favorite of mine because uh, it it has its uh, subtle essence, its subtle um, beauty to it. and at the same time it's not too heavy on the eyes of the reader and that is precisely what i as a reader and a writer love the most about any piece of work be it prose or poetry so do you have a particular uh, preference of your own apart from the word choice is it is uh, do you abide by a certain style or do you have any poetic device or is it just uh, by the flow of your hand it's just the flow it's just uh, i mean you, you cannot write a poetry by Mm. You know, using some poetic design or yeah. uh, pre-decided theme, it mm. just comes naturally. Absolutely. The only thing I have done differently in this book is I just organize them in a particular But, order, mm. so that you know it flows like a theme where you start by discovering the lust and desires and mm. other emotions mm-hmm. uh, to be able to find your own self towards right. the end. I think that that's the whole idea. Otherwise, right. it's just a free flow. That's right. That's that's really beautiful. So um speaking of that I really would like to um recite a few pieces from your book so that we can give our viewers just a small insight my favorite is such as love which is uh which kind of um throws light on what we have been talking about so far such as love we rise from ashes like a phoenix too damaged to be touched yet too determined to become such as love it kills you to be born again beautiful i like i like the last line uh, i have seen this in a lot of your poems that uh, your concluding line says it all uh, it is the perfect end to the poem and it carries all the weight and it just uh, you know whips you it takes your breath away yeah i had a lot of conflicting thoughts before you know i started compiling this book mm. because you know some of these poems are just single line yeah right? yeah and uh, i do admire a lot of work which is out there on instagram but you know some of the poems are so obvious that mm. people are stating the obvious in just four or five words and they call it a poem yeah I and i was so afraid that if i just put one line out there would people like it mm. because to me i cannot just exaggerate that emotion beyond a certain point Absolutely. to me that is the you know the final nail in the coffin and if that's one line that's it I I just don't want to give my readers some extra lines just for the sake of you know making mm. it look like a big poetry. Right, right, right. So no, no forcing it, just letting it be the way it is exactly. the, in its uh, raw form. Right. Yeah. Uh, the next one I would like to read is uh, the one you told me you wrote when you were ten years old. Right. It's called Who Am I? Who Am I? Spontaneous breath or sense of emotion, love. lust or you can call me devotion an atom or a will of human a shining star or a life in motion yeah that was really a funny... uh, mature take to it even when you wrote it at the age of 10 i mean not not many people can do that i mean i remember that was perhaps yeah. that was perhaps your age <laughs> i was much older that time <laughs> yeah maybe maybe yeah. uh i think that was uh, yeah in 2000 in 2010 yeah no it's yeah 2008 10 and there's a funny story behind this i'll uh-huh. tell you uh so i completed my engineering and mm-hmm. uh, academically i'm okay uh you know yeah and in campus recruitment a uh, tons of companies used to come mm-hmm. and i used to get selected in written exam Yeah, I used to get selected in all the kind of technical kind of interviews and all those stuff. But when mm-hmm. you used to come to write HR round, yeah, the very first question they'll ask you define yourself. Uh huh. Right. Of course. And and I told you right, I was very introvert. Now I'm speaking much more than I was used to that time. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, I failed ten or eleven interviews oh. just in that last round. Oh my god! Because I don't have question define yourself. Right. I, I don't have answer to this question. Right. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, then uh one final company was left to come to my campus mm-hmm. and then a night before i sat down i wrote five paper about who am i 
Five and this is just an wow. yeah, this is just an expert on excerpt of that excerpt particular. Of, hmm. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. I mean, um, it is it goes down deep, right? You, you as an introvert, we keep uh, thinking a lot, we listen a lot, and based on that, we do perceive a lot of things that are influenced by the outer world and our own selves within. So when we actually come to the point of putting down on the paper you know it's going to be read out there you know you can't undo that as as long as it's in your head uh, you can put it to its to it you can ask yourself again and again but once you put it down on paper even if you write it again some other day what's been written on that paper you is not something you can just undo so that's that's a heavy uh, a yet a very life changing thing although it may seem trivial for an introvert it's a very yeah. life changing moment because that is you're exactly acknowledging that this is you and this is this is uh, how i want the world to perceive me so exactly. i think it's, it's really beautiful i was being honest you know mm, in all yeah. those interviews when i said i cannot define myself yeah yeah so yeah. i i was totally honest that time it, it was not like that i don't know who am i but mm. you know that's how it it resulted but uh, that was the case i i cannot define myself <laughs> that's and that's completely right, so. all right i mean uh, i'm glad that you know introversion is being normalized today uh, because otherwise uh, you you know i mean coming from uh, a generation uh, from you're a millennial so you must have heard a lot you know ki you know you should talk more why don't you talk a lot you know look at yeah. friends who are talking so much they are outgoing they are extroverts and why can't you be the same yeah. so uh, it is it has come down to the point of you know letting the person be who they are and letting them be in their own element and i think uh, partially uh, i correct me if i'm wrong but partially because of your introversion this it gave rise to this uh, beautiful piece of uh, poetry so that you could explore uh, it in different ways yeah that's right yeah so um, we'll just read one more uh, that i completely like it's called desire restrained by respiration intoxicated by temptation a camouflage of death and life in motion a desire is like a prophecy that never exists yeah. beautiful i just couldn't keep the book down when i uh, started reading it and uh, the it's it had me right from the cover you know when i saw it in uh, the the digital format uh, when you when we posted about you know the actual right. like i was like i cannot wait to have or look at the cover when it's in my hands because you can imagine the way a certain book is going to look in your hands but uh, the way it actually yeah. when the day it actually does and for you it must have been even a bigger moment even though you have yep. uh, been published before your book out of uh, order was there so it must have still been a very great feeling for you to hold the books in your hands because for every writer their books are their baby right yeah that's right so that and i'm thankful i mean thanks for the opportunity i I'm, i cannot be more happier than who i am right now and ink feathers a team did a great job we glad and we enjoyed working on it i mean uh, back when you told me that you know I, this is a book of poems that i want and then after the year after you got some uh, prior things off your plate you got back i was like great this is this is it this is the moment and it was mm -hmm. i'm glad it happened in good time So I think yeah. we connected in January or February, and uh, in this year, yeah, this year, yeah, oh, very early this year, and uh, in I think uh, in ha like a, one or two months ago, your book just came out. Yeah. yeah. So uh, since we were speaking of poetry, I just have a very quick game to play with you. Now, uh, I don't mean to school you, but uh, this is going to be very rapid. It's uh, it's not going to be taking a lot of time. But uh, speaking of poetry this is something that we've been using a lot in our conversation or uh, phrases or uh, proverbs that we have been taught in school which mean we may not remember at all but i just i'm just going to throw you a couple of random ones and let's see if you get them right okay i'm just going to uh, hint them out to you and uh, i'm very bad at it but i will try okay okay <laughs> so um i was just going to make it really quick so that uh, you know um it will be fast and rapid okay so what do you say when you're talking about someone at the end of the room end of the room an elephant in the room no it's speak of the devil 
at the elephant oh, in the room okay. is when uh, you're just you know uh, no but everybody yeah, is yeah, ignoring yeah. the major problem that's there okay oh yeah now you refer to this desert when you mean something is really really easy oh god you are <laughs> give me some hints <laughs> well it's uh, a it's a piece of something piece of cake yeah yes, absolutely oh, absolutely <laughs> you add That's... this condiment to uh, a wound when you say that it it will make a bad situation worse actually a salt oh salt a salt sorry sorry <laughs> okay how bad i can so one <laughs> a stitch in dash saves nine Mm. I told you I'm bad with all this. A uh, stitch in time. A stitch in time mm-hmm. saves nine. Yeah. Okay. See, I told you that's not my point. <laughs> no, that <laughs> was. I hope it was you know uh, fun for you because uh, it was yeah, just yeah. something refreshing that I wanted. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining me, Ankit, um, and uh, everybody. Please get your book, Threads of Trust. It's available in ebook, paperback, and hardcover formats. in india and uh, amazon globally you can get it wherever you are in whichever format you're comfortable with i have personally lever of hard cover but um, no no forcing there no pressure but um, you can follow ankit uh, on instagram his id is drunkard poet you can follow him for more works that he keeps putting he's a wonderful photographer he's a great poet and i am uh, pretty sure he's going to bless us with another book of his very very soon okay we will see you next time with yet another amazing discussion please don't go anywhere thank you so much ankit for joining me today thank you take care take care